Hey there, hi there, hoder. Hello there, my name is Adam. Welcome back to the channel. On this beautiful Saturday morning, uh, we're going to go over what we've been finding as we tore down my 855 Big Cam 4. Uh, it's a NTC 350. Uh, we're going to do a full overhaul on it and we're, uh, we're balls deep in it right now. So let's get kicking. Here we have a beautiful selection of liners. Uh, as we took them out, we're doing some inspecting on them, looking at what's going on. This particular engine, uh, these liners use, you got your O-rings, which isn't uncommon. Uh, but what differs from this and other big cams, uh, apparently there's a gear split in here. Instead of, a, uh, instead of using some sort of sealant to seal the top of the liners, they use what's called like a sealing ring. Um, our research shows that some do, some don't the way they do. This particular engine did. From uh, everything we're finding, we're looking at it, it looks like this motor's never been apart, never been overhauled before, which makes sense. Uh, I believe it has somewhere around 600,000 miles on it. Uh, about 200,000 miles ago, we did rods and mains in it, um, and we also we jumped, we ran the overhead on it. Other than that, um, really no major engine work has been done to the interest. Everything on the outside has been in change, you know, we know. We did injectors at one time, uh, turbo's been replaced. Uh, Injection pump rebuilt, you know, uh, pretty much everything except for cracking into the motor, which is what we're getting to now. Trying to uh, give the give the old girl a new lease on life. Um, it still ran good, ran fine, surprisingly, uh, but it smoked really bad. So we're in operation no more smoke, as we're calling it, and uh, kind of show you some of the things we found. First, we'll start with the liners here. Uh, I feel as though I'd actually been changing the coolant out. I, I had a small leak for the longest time that was just like, okay, every uh, every month or so you're adding a gallon. So I mean, your coolant's getting a chance to get some fresh stuff in there regularly, not to mention we've had a couple of things where we've had to drain the entire cooling system recently. Like I had um, the hose that goes from the air pump, from the air compressor, that where it gets its water fed. That went bad take that off no matter how quick you tried to like try and do it. I think I had to have it off to have it measured anyways, but uh, either way, you know, the cooling system got drained. I feel like every year, you know, as an old truck, there's something that happens where it's like, okay, we got to drain the cooling system or whatever. But so what we're finding here might've been old, but I don't know. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to tell. If somebody knows how to tell how long this has been here, you're some sort of fucking uh, scientist that knows how to carbon date electrolysis. Uh, this one right here is probably the worst. Yeah, I could go either way. Both these stuff. We'll bring them in close here, though. Um, let's see if the camera will pick it up. There she is. Yeah, you can see we got some pretty decent electrolysis happening there. And my understanding, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me I'm, tell me I'm an idiot in the comments. But what happens is the coolant breaks down. Uh, it allows bubbles to form on the surface. And something about they superheat and explode. Some sort of electric charge is brought into them, and uh, it essentially just starts eating away. I think these essentially are small, like zap marks, you know, like shorts. I, I don't know if that's the correct term, but uh, it creates this the breakdown of the coolant, superheating, some sort of electrical charge is involved, and bam, you end up with this. We don't know if that's old, we don't know if it's new. We know it's there, it sucks, and we're glad we got new pistons, we got new liners. Uh, we didn't have any leaking going on. But either way, it was still there. Uh, we took the pistons and rods out, obviously. Everything was fine there, which was surprising because we actually found the number four cooling nozzle laying in the oil pan. Uh, we have no, no idea how long it's been there. Um, but being that the rod's not blued, and uh, I haven't seen, you know, we, you would expect to see, you would think a significant drop in oil pressure, but it already had lower oil pressure. You know, it was it was still run 35 psi. Um, you know, at you know when you're going down the road, you know, at a higher RPM, you know, you're getting 35 psi. And I know, you know, it's only 15 or so. But um, our understanding is that's pretty close to being in spec, yeah, especially for an old Warnell motor. So um, it's not like we had zero oil pressure. So that piston cooling nozzle, we assume, must have fallen off recently because. Man, you would think we would have a catastrophic failure with a rod or something, you know, or not getting that piston cooled, something there, but hey, we got lucky. So uh, let's move along to a different part. 
All right, miscellaneous engine parts that come out of here. Broken line, we got to get the fuel line that came off the back of the head uh, didn't go well. We got to get that, got to get that figured out. Um, here's uh, the squirting piston cooler, piston, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Piston cooling nozzles. Um, these are all intact. The one that broke, I don't even know where the one that broke is. That one's coming apart, it looks like. Um, but yeah, we just found this portion in the bottom of the pan, and then how many are here? One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's one missing. The one that was broken, we must have thrown away or something like that. But um, this is what we found in the bottom of the pan, which attaches to this, which bolts into the side of the block. Uh, we got the injectors out, hold downs. Uh, <clears throat> the heads are at a machine shop in Winona currently, getting uh, getting checked, surface if needed. It's getting new valve guides. Those were bad. So that's where we're at with the heads on the motor. A large grouping of rods, similar to say when your father would go out of town and your stepmother had the house to herself. Anyways, uh, everything there looks fine. We got the caps all marked properly so they go back on the, on the crank the way they're supposed to. Uh, other than the pistons having, you know, some decent buildup of carbon on them and stuff, um, you know, they actually looked really, really good. No damage to be seen. Um, we only found one stuck ring, I do believe, two. So that's a, that's a, that was a plus. Uh, the insides of the liners uh, were pretty good and shiny or whatever, which makes sense. But uh, the pistons themselves seem fine. We haven't found any cracked or broken rings. Um, and the bearings look really good. Um, these, this particular set has somewhere around 200,000 miles on them. Uh, but we're not seeing any copper. We're just seeing some light scratches. Um, Nothing you catch a finger on or anything, uh, which is pretty lucky as well because we found a big rip in the intake boot. So this thing had been sucking some dirt for a little bit here, uh, but the real lack of damage we're seeing anywhere, it must have been pretty recent that that happened too. So another, another dodged bullet there. Uh, this boot goes directly to the turbo. Uh, it wasn't ripped all the way to here, but it had this, the rip was probably from here to here and uh, there's no way it wasn't sucking dirt in there um, we haven't seen any major damage because of it but you could tell that there was some dirt going through it there she is block with no liners in it everything seems to be checking out just fine there uh, the deck surface could be better but it's definitely serviceable uh, we don't think it needs to be cut or you know anything like that it'll just get cleaned up real nice we don't see any cracks nothing missing uh something i found interesting you know cummins have individual heads well three individual heads uh the bore spacing here i thought that was cool that this one is smaller than this one and obviously that's for you know setting two different heads on or whatever so it's not an evenly spaced thing something that uh, i found fascinating big old bucket full of head bolts we got a new one of those oil pan come off uh, nothing major in there, no metal or anything we were concerned about, just a piston cooling nozzle laying in the bottom, which again seems like we uh, dodged a bullet on that one. Check this out, pretty proud of it myself. Uh, I reserve all right in all uh, intellectual property to this here device, so uh, if you try and recreate it, I will sue you. Uh, this is a uh, push rod holding stand to make sure that all stay in the same order. Uh, just a couple of tubifers with a, uh, some holes drilled in them. And then the bottom holes are just countersunk so that they didn't go all the way through. But uh, keeps everything straight. Keeps everything in order. You're welcome for the idea. Our arrangement of parts storage we have here. Head gaskets. We inspected those. None of them were blown. One was creeping up on, uh, on maybe having a problem. But then again, the engine uh, didn't have any enough compression. Well, it didn't have... It's not that it didn't have any, it just didn't have enough compression to blow, uh, blow anything. Unlike your stepsister, who seems to be able to blow everything. So uh, let's take a look at some other parts. Here's our rods, all cleaned up. Everything looks good on those. These rods, this is what a rod out of a motor with approximately 600,000 looks like. Um, no bluing, everything looks good. So we'll start hanging pistons off them here in a little bit. Here we got a side-by-side -side comparison of the pistons. 
New one, obviously. Here's the old one. Uh, major difference, this one being what they call a Tri-Tech piston. Uh, it only uses three rings, where the old piston here uses four rings. Um, newer technology. Uh, noticeable differences on the top. This is pretty rounded compared to this one. Comes to a pretty decently sharp, ooh, ow. <laughs> Just kidding. Sharp point. Uh, part numbers are, my old piston is, a 306921 and my new piston is a 4058671 uh, this is a 17 to 1 compression piston this one is a 17.2 so I estimate that'll give us another at least 5,000 horsepower uh, I didn't measure distance here another little thing you can see the valve reliefs on this piston are a little lower than they are on this piston. So maybe they're actually the same height. You know, I guess you would figure out distance from pin to valve relief here to determine if they're up higher. Maybe if these are deeper or if, whether or not these are deeper or they're the same height as these, but these are taller. So I guess you'd have to get out some measuring tools. I'm not really that concerned. side-by-side -side comparison there. This is a brand new bearing. This is a used, obviously. Uh, this one's not too horrible a shape, considering. Uh, you can see a little copper coming through here. Uh, no excessive grooves. It's got a little scratch, but uh, really not too bad at all. Uh, we put these in probably 200,000 miles ago. I don't remember exactly how long ago, but these aren't original. We put uh, rods and mains in it one, at one point in time. So, new one's going in, old one's in trash. Here's a new upper and a new and an old upper. Uh, this upper shows no copper through there and it really doesn't have much for scratching either, so that's a win. So back to being perfect. I was gonna wrap up the teardown by 855 Big Camp 4. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you maybe even found it educational and inspirational. Feel free to tell me I'm an idiot in the comments. More than I'm extremely handsome, both probably apply. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed what I saw here today. So you can see me doing more of my most excellent work. See you in the next one.